Yes. I haven't done that. <laughs> I haven't even... So one of the things that I think I'm going to start doing is talking at the end of each video about where we're going to go next or even possibilities of where we're going to go next. Hi, today's the day we're going to bind those little mats that we quilted last time. I'm assuming that most of the people watching this shorter video already have experience with these kinds of double fold bindings. Expect a tighter fit, but go ahead and cut your binding the same way that you normally do. Other folks may want to watch the longer video that explains why you do each step the way that you do. In the meantime, we want to join these fabrics together in a scarf joint, right sides together, and you know you have the fabric placed correctly if you can cut off both sides of your joint with one snip of your scissors. Don't do that until you've joined them together, however, because you don't want to distort this edge. I'm calling this a scarf joint throughout, but I haven't been able to confirm that that's what it's called. I was calling it a miter joint. That's obviously wrong. Then trim it. And then we'll take it to the ironing board and iron it in half as quickly as we can. We're going to use this uh, fusible thread that I've been talking about um, in the bobbin. And I'm going to set my stitch as long as it'll go. I'm using my walking foot. This is another time when that's a nice thing to do. Put my needle down. This helps things stay a little neater. And then because I'm going to do a quarter inch uh, binding, I want to do less than that. And I've sometimes had this show and had to pick it out. And so I'm going to go pretty close to the edge more like an eighth. I really don't want to get very close to that quarter inch line. And I'm just going to stitch, I'm just going to stitch around. And one thing I always like to do is just kind of get a sense of where my scarf joint is going to fall. And so if you can see what I'm doing, I'm just kind of like here, it's actually really close to the corner, and I don't want it like that, so I'm going to move it here. And then adjust accordingly. Now we're just going to apply mitering the corners the way that we always do, doing a double fold binding. I'm using a quarter inch foot here. If you've done this before, you can do this at any width, as you know. This piece is two-sided and I happen to be using contrasting thread. Then you want to join your binding ends in the same way that you always do and finish attaching it to the perimeter of your piece. Next we're going to press out the binding on the front side, being sure not to heat all the way through to activate the fusible thread yet. Then flip the work over and press the binding firmly onto the fusible thread leaving the corners for last. What we're trying to do is put the art component of our quilt first. And it everything else, even though we want it to be good quality, it's a wall hanging, we want people to be able to clean it eventually without uh, being very disappointed. Now we want to do a little miter here. And when we stitch, we're going to stitch from the right side and we're going to come this way. And so we want to be on the top of the miter first. And then, and then come down here so we don't have to go up. We're coming off of a hump of fabric instead of onto one. And so we're going to go in this direction. I like to have a tight binding framing my artwork and the fusible thread allows me to have the look that I'm after. And I'm going to put one pin. And so we're taking all those things into account, but we want it to be beautiful and artistic. The last thing we're going to do is stitch in the ditch. I like to use my edger foot. This will catch all of the back of the binding as well as make a nice little line of stitching on the front. But you can see that with a little practice 
uh, you can get this whole thing with matching thread to look really, really nice. So if you do let me know that you want to do the bag, please note whether you want to do the color wash version where we do the little pieces or whether you want to do the stencil version where you cut your own stencil. These I called artichokes. Um, and then learn how to paint that and heat set it and all that good stuff. And maybe we'll do both versions, but we'll have to see what, uh, what happens. Thanks.